What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button, the like button on the video. Also, check out my website, boxingego.com. As you guys see, boxing news, updates, videos, exclusive interviews, and more. Now, I gotta talk about the title of this video. Leo Santa Cruz versus Carl Frampton is set for a featherweight brawl. For the full write-up, make sure you guys, again, head over to my website, link in the description. And I wanna talk about this particular fight at featherweight and give my thoughts on it. Now, as a fight, it's a good fight. It's a good fight between two undefeated fighters, one being a current champion in the featherweight division, who is Leo Santa Cruz, and then also a former champion from a previous division. And the reason I say former is because he's not new, he's new to this weight. This is uncharted territory. He was having trouble making weight, he says. So the move up was needed, according to Carl Frampton. So his last performance, he broke Scott Quigg's jaw in a competitive fight, and he won that fight via split decision. Leo Santa Cruz had a, a very tune-up style fight against Kiko Martinez, and he did what Frampton and also Scott Quigg had done to Kiko Martinez, which is stop him. And Carl Frampton actually beat Kiko Martinez twice, one by stoppage. And as you guys can see, this is the management, part of the management. He also has a pack with Al Heyman. Barry McCugian, McCuguigan. We have reached an agreement for Carl Frampton to face Leo Santa Cruz late summer in New York City. Details to follow next week. Hashtag monster fight. The fight will take place in Barclays, which has hosted some great fights as of lately. This is the split decision win. Carl Frampton versus Scott Quigg. And I, I'm looking forward to it, man. I think it's a good fight. I, I'm actually surprised that it's happening on the East Coast. It seems like more of a West Coast fight, but Carl Frampton, he's the road warrior. He's the one coming from overseas in the UK. So I believe I'm, I'm starting to understand. I talked to some people behind the scenes, like Kenny Porter, just different people. And I'm starting to see that certain fighters don't want to give their opponent hometown advantage or even close. Leo Santa Cruz, he reps California. He's from California. He has a home in California. So Carl Frampton probably wanted to fight him on something that's a little bit more neutral turf because he's coming from flying in from the UK. And if the fight were to happen at the StubHub, that would give Leo Santa Cruz a huge crowd advantage. So that's probably why it's taking place at the Barclays. And it's a state-of-the-art venue, new venue. So it is what it is. I don't know much about the undercard as of yet, but you can see the Carl Frampton tweet. The Jackal versus Leo Santa Cruz for the WBA featherweight title the Big Apple late summer, and the new two-weight world champion. So he's daring to be great uh, moving up. Now, it has to be noted, it has to, at least on my channel because I speak that real, that both fighters in the main event avoided this man right here. And this is the reason why. You see that arm connecting on Nonito Donaire, that accuracy. So... It, I mean, it goes without saying, if you follow the sport of boxing, you'll know what happened with this particular fight. Both guys at one point were in the same division. And this is the thing with boxing fans. A lot of boxing fans speak nonsense. Like, Gennady Golovkin had the opportunity to fight Andre Ward at 168. But now, since he's moved up, because Ward's not going to stall his career any more than legal problems or injuries has allowed for his career to, to stall. And that's what a lot of people criticize Andre Ward for. Oh, he's inactive Ward. So when he couldn't get the Triple G fight and he had no real big names that he had to fight, you know what I'm saying? Like he could have fought James DeGale, Badu Jack, but those are kind of the new blood in the 168 division. He's already beat guys who had bigger names than that, like Carl Froch. So he felt he had cleaned up the division. It was probably getting to the point where making weight, he would have to diet even more as he got older and his body matured and stuff like that. So he's like, you know what, why, why, why not give my body a break and move up to 175, but let the fans tell it. They're going to say, oh, why should Gennady Golovkin fight a guy who's at 175? No, 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 no. He's at light heavyweight as a result of not being able to get and land a Triple G fight at 168. Triple G's team wanted to pull him down to 164. Even though they were willing to fight guys like they said, Hilberto Ramirez, guys like Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., guys like Carl Frotch at the full 168, guys who are bigger and stronger more most likely than Andre Ward, but they wanted to bring Andre Ward down. But my point being is this, that 
fans play dumb. And all of a sudden, you're like, oh, why should a 160-pounder fight a 175-pound ward? No, that wasn't the deal. They were supposed to, before he actually officially moved up to light heavyweight, to pursue, and you can hear Roy Jones say it on my channel, Andre Ward wasn't going to run from no one at 168. But he said Golovkin didn't take the opportunity. Golovkin and team, therefore he moved up. And it is the same situation with Guillermo Rigondeau, period. You could say, oh, why should Leo Santa Cruz fight? He needs to come up to featherweight. They were all in the same division at a point in time, actively. So, as a as a, a, a way to get rid of Rigondeau or not be bothered with him, they moved up in weight. So, I don't want to hear this, oh, but, but they're at featherweight. Yeah, they're at featherweight now because they didn't want to fight him. That's how that works. If they fought him then, you know what I mean, maybe Leo Santa Cruz wouldn't be a titleist at featherweight. You know what I mean? Who, who knows? If you, you see what happened to Donaire. After the Donaire fight, Donaire did not look the same. Even in, not even just the Nicholas Walters fight. He had that Simpiwe Vacheca fight, and he kind of like, his eye was bothering him. He was like running around stopping the fight and, and calling for breaks and stuff like that. He just didn't look the same after Rigondeaux took his soul. So, bottom line, Carl Frampton... Leo Santa Cruz, they're good fighters. This is a good fight, but it has to be noted on my channel that they did avoid this man right here. And now they're making a mega fight without him. And it's kind of unfair. You look at Carl Frampton, Carl Frampton, his mandatory was rigging down. He beat Scott Quigg, so you stuck around long enough to get the Scott Quigg rivalry going and get an outcome. But all of a sudden, after you beat him via split decision, Instead of having El Chacal, the Jackal versus the Jackal match at 122, you say, oh, my body can't take this. I got to give up. How convenient is it that all of a sudden now it's just too strenuous on your body and you just have to move up to featherweight when this guy becomes your mandatory? And the last thing I'll say is boxing fans are so fickle. Gennady Golovkin faces a guy that the world, even Sergey Kovalev told me, that he's like, who is this guy? He's like, I've never seen a Dominic Wade. Like he said, he had never even seen him before. So my point being is Gennady Golovkin fights a guy that most people, even avid boxing fans, hadn't really seen much of Dominique Wade, right? And people justify it because it's his mandatory. Yet when Leo Santa Cruz is being called out by Guillermo Rigano, who's a champion, he doesn't fight him. His dad and team make up excuses like, oh, he's boring. No one wants to see this. Same thing with um, Carl Frampton. All of a sudden, his body can't make weight. All of a sudden, he becomes the mandatory. And you guys like mandatory so much. But all of a sudden, when Rigondeau becomes the mandatory for Carl Frampton, oh, no, he should move up to featherweight. Like, it, it's just crazy, the politics in boxing. But this is what new media does. We, we kind of shine the light and the roaches will scatter. Believe me. When I tell you this, the roaches will scatter because there's no justification. Again, you can't justify Gennady Golovkin, who's a powerhouse, and he's fighting his mandatory, so he's fulfilling the obligation, but then you want to make excuses for why Carl Frampton should move up to fight Leo Santa Cruz and not fight Rigondeaux. You know what I mean? When Rigondeaux became the mandatory after Scott Quigg, it's, just, it's because a lot of people want to preserve their fighter. You'd rather see... Carl Frampton lose to Leo Santa Cruz or Leo Santa Cruz lose to Carl Frampton than to see him lose to either one of them lose to Guillermo Rigondeau, a guy you don't like for whatever reason. So do your thing, Rigondeau. Hopefully you get a big fight soon when somebody is forced to fight you. Maybe you have to move up, unfortunately, to um, chase people down just like you had to do with Donaire. But I'm sure I'm sure the opportunity will come. But back to the main event. The actual fight that is going on, it's a good fight. I want to see it. I'm not sure who I'm leaning towards. Obviously, I haven't seen Carl Frotch at this particular weight. He looks like he has a frame to add some some muscle. Um, shout out to PBC. Let me know what you guys think of this fight. Leo Santa Cruz versus Carl Frampton. Hopefully, the winner of this fight is a Gary Russell Jr. Maybe Rigondeaux moves up. Not quite sure. Vasil Lomachenko moved up to 130, I believe. To fight he's fighting rocky martinez so i'm not sure if he's gonna move back down but maybe a catch weight with that or maybe he'll move back down I, I don't know but this is a good fight and 
good thing about it is there's some interesting players at 122 to 130 right around there there's some good fights to be made Abnomatis is still there so Abnomatis versus Jesus Cuellar the winner of that will be a champion as well some good fights especially imagine the winner of this versus the winner of Abnomatis versus Jesus Cuellar so if it's Santa Cruz it could be Santa Cruz Mars part two if it's Frampton it could be Frampton and Mares or Frampton and Jesus Cuellar any way you slice it it's um some interesting and good boxing coming up let me know what you guys think drop it in the comment section make sure you like my video as always hate comment and subscribe to the next videos ego signing off so if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel you can show your appreciation by going to the paypal donate button or the youtube support button and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video much more to come thank you guys for your support boxing ego the future of boxing